Welcome to part two of the EuroLeam Plus lecture series on Copacabana. Today we will be covering estimating the workload limit for workstations. The learning outcomes of this lecture are to further understand how to configure and operate Copacabana, to understand how to estimate the amount of workload that each Copacabana card should represent, and crucially, to understand the difference between direct and indirect workloads, which is necessary for proper use of Copacabana cards. Every new job released into a system increases the throughput time of the system. Copacabana's approach to controlling the release of jobs to workstations enables a predictable throughput time, which then makes valid delivery commitments to customers possible. In Lecture 1, we showed how a partitioned planning board is used in Copacabana to monitor and control the release of workload. It uses cards that are displayed on this board to keep track of the current workload at respective stations. We mentioned that each card represents a fixed amount of time, for example, five minutes, and that for an order to be released into the system, it must obtain the number of cards that is equivalent to its required processing time at the station. While it is accurate that the cards required by an order reflect the length of its processing time at the respective workstation, the cards are not expressed in minutes. Instead, the total number of cards on the board for a workstation represents 100% of the maximum throughput time that is desired at a workstation, because stations' throughput times determine how long it would take to process orders in the system, we wish to control them to have a predictable overall system throughput time and delivery for orders. The desired throughput times for stations are set based on factors such as their capacity. A full board represents 100% of the workstation's desired throughput time, and each card represents a portion of the 100%, which means that in this illustration we have here, each of the station's four cards represents 25%. Each card that is attached to release an order to a station increases the throughput time of that station by 25% of the desired maximum. Cards could be set to represent any percentage desired, and stations could have different percentages per card. But a trade-off is always required in this decision. Smaller percentages on the cards make it possible to combine them to precisely match the processing time for any order that is being considered for release, but it means that there are more cards to manage. The number of cards to attach to an order for its processing at a station is determined by converting the order's processing time to a percentage of the workstation's maximum throughput time, using this equation. The percentages are then linked to the number of cards required by dividing P by the percentage each card represents. Using Order 1 as an example, the 5 minutes required for processing Order 1 at drilling is 25% of the maximum desired throughput time for drilling, which means one card is needed to attach to the order for drilling. The same calculation is repeated for turning and shaping. For turning, it translates to a percentage that cannot be precisely represented by the percentage placed on each card, which shows why smaller percentages on cards is good sometimes. For instance, if we had six cards instead, with each representing 16.67%, then it would have been possible to have a more precise conversion to the number of cards required for order one at turning. But in this case, we will continue with this example and approximate to three cards. The required cards are available on the board, so they are removed and attached to Order 1 for its release into the system. Next is Order 2, which cannot be released because the two cards it requires for shaping are not available on the board. This means shaping would remain idle and might undergo starvation until Order 1 arrives with its four cards. This is not an ideal situation, because Order 1 does not yet contribute to shaping's workload until it completes drilling and milling. This brings us to the concept of differentiating between direct and indirect loads. A direct load increases a station's throughput time, or TT, while an indirect load does not. An order does not become a direct load on a station until it arrives in the station's queue for processing. Before then, it is an indirect load. So, upon release, order 1 is a direct load on drilling, but an indirect load on turning and shaping. The further downstream a station is in an order's routing, the more indirect the order's load is on the station. This understanding is used to adjust the number of cards that are attached to an order. The adjustment is based on the amount of time that is expected for the order to take before it arrives at the stations and becomes a direct load. 
The same formula for percentage contribution presented earlier is applied for converting the required processing time of an order into the card equivalent, but this is now multiplied by a factor, C, that adjusts for the time the order will spend upstream before arriving at the station. P is then divided by the percentage each card represents to find the number of cards required. If this equation is applied to recalculate the number of cards to order one, the results remain the same for drilling, but we would have different results for turning and shaping. Instead of three and four cards for turning and shaping respectively, we would attach two cards each for both stations. This means that, after releasing order one, we would have two cards left for shaping, which can then be used to release order two. In other words, the downstream capacities are available for other operations until order one arrives for processing. In this lecture, we discussed how a station's Copacabana cards are expressed in percentages of its desired maximum throughput time. We calculated the number of cards required by example orders 1 and 2 and determined whether or not there were enough cards available on the board to release one or both orders. If we assumed all load to be direct load, only order 1 could be released. However, after applying the indirect load factor for the downstream stations of order 1, then both orders could be released. This shows that recognizing the difference between direct and indirect loads can lead to a better utilization of the system capacity. We have also shown that it may be preferable to have more cards with lower percentages available on the board. In this example at the turning station, 16.67% may be a better card size since it leads to a more precise match to order processing times. To sum up, the workload regulation in Copacabana ensures predictable throughput times at stations and through the system, which then makes it possible to make valid delivery commitments to customers. Thank you for watching this lecture on Coba Cabana. Here are some references for more information on this topic. If you want to learn more about lean techniques for customized manufacturing, visit euroleanplus.org.